Hello and welcome back to Switch and Lever. Today we're going to make a coin using a CNC mill. If you're only interested in cool milling shots, I suggest to skip forward to the time indicated on the screen. Otherwise, let's get going. Coins have been around for virtually forever. From small to large, from round to square to whatever the hell this shape is. In metal, wood, plastic and maybe most importantly chocolate. Gods, kings, queens, fictional characters and celebrities all have their own coins. There are even coins which aren't actual coins nowadays. So why don't you have your own? Let's change that, shall we? While there are many conceivable ways to make a coin, in this video we're going to look at making a coin in 3D together with a realistic head and milling the result on a CNC mill from a piece of brass stock. Now there are two ways of making a realistic looking three-dimensional head on a coin, without modeling it from scratch, but unfortunately both are somewhat time intensive. First one is perhaps the easiest one, but it does require you to acquire an actual 3D model of your head. There is software, even free software, from Autodesk called 123D Catch, which can take a series of photos and stitch together a decent 3D model. For an entire head you need to sit perfectly still while someone photographs your head from every conceivable angle. For an entire head you could need somewhere between 50 and 100 photos to get a decent 3D model. However, if you're only doing the profile you could get away with less as you could limit yourself to only doing one side of the head. There are plenty of good videos and tutorials on how to use 1 to 3D catch so I suggest you check them out. Anyhow, once you have the 3D model, basically all you need to do is bisect it down the middle and squish it down so it's thin enough to fit on a coin. Model the rest of the coin features around it and this will be the geometry which will guide the CNC mill. The second method is good if you don't have access to a 3D model to begin with or means of making one, but you do have access to a photo of the person you want to put on your coin. To use it on the coin you're going to convert the photo into what is called a depth map in which parts of the photo which are closest to the camera are colored white and things furthest away are colored black, with everything in between being a gradient of grey. Unfortunately there is no easy way to simply convert a photo into a depth map, so it would require some hand painting in a photo editing software to get the image to how it should look. In your 3D software you need to find a function to displace geometry using the depth map you just made. This is done differently in different programs, but look for displace or in some cases it may also be called height field. You may also need to go back and forth between the photo editing and your 3D software a few times to get the desired result, each time fine tuning the photo a bit. Once done, model the rest of the coin around it and you're ready to go on to the next stage. But first a slight detour. While this video is about milling a coin, there is nothing stopping you from taking your 3D model and using a service such as Shapeways to 3D print your coin, even in metal. Be aware though that the cost difference between doing it yourself and having it 3D printed is quite prohibitive, so if you have access to a CNC mill then that's the way to go. For this video we're going to be using a Roland MDX40A mill, which is really not made for milling metal and requires some special attention to do so. Because this mill is used mainly for milling softer materials, using double sided sticky tape on an MDF base is usually sufficient for work holding, even for high speed machining. Don't however, like me, be fooled into thinking that that's enough to hold when milling metal. Even if the tape holds, the piece isn't secured properly, it will vibrate and the result will be undesirable. Because of this, an entirely new bed was made for the mill out of a sheet of aluminum plate. Into this, four holes were drilled and tapped to securely hold down the workpiece. Since we're going to be milling both sides of the coin, we need to make sure we can reliably mill the back side aligned with the front. Therefore the workpiece was drilled with four holes, matching the holes in the new bed for the mill, and the center point of them was marked so the mill could be zeroed on the same point. As this machine is not meant for milling metal, even a soft metal like brass is tough on it, so the milling had to be slow, taking only fractions of a millimeter at a time. Here we're using an engraving cutter with a 90 degree included angle, as it provided both sturdiness and could create some finer detail than a ball ended end mill could do. As this wasn't a production run and I wasn't going to make a lot of coins, the speed wasn't much of a bother. It took between 2 and 3 hours per side of the coin, starting with a roughing pass to get most of the material out and then a finishing pass for the last fraction of material to be milled away. Once 
Once the first side is done, we're going to flip the coin to make the back side. If you mark the center point and center the mill well for the front, the back side should be milled in the right position without having to reset the zero point. While doing it by eye isn't the most exact method, with care you can still get it within a fraction of a millimeter, close enough for no one to notice if the alignment is off. Make sure you've designated the screw heads as no-go zones for the mill as well, so you don't accidentally crash into them. I chose not to mill out the circumference of the coin, mainly because the milling machine was underpowered. I did though mill up to a ledge, which could serve as a guide when taking the coin to a belt sander to hog away most of the remaining material. The plastic was put there to protect the bottom of the coin from scratching. Setting up an angle plate and another piece of plastic and wedging a file in between allowed me to hand file a right angled shoulder all around the coin in a much more controlled fashion than the belt sander would allow. While time consuming, it gave a very nice result. When you're done, you'll have a very nice looking coin, but in my opinion, still a bit boring. It's just bare metal and it doesn't have any life to it. Fortunately, that's easy to change, without having to handle it for a long time to build up natural patina. Since we made this from brass, there are many different ways to create patination, such as using liver of sulfur. Unfortunately, not having access to that meant finding another more direct method to create a similar look. Enter the blowtorch. Heating up brass removes the shine, oxidizes the surface and makes it dull and unattractive. No worries, we're going to fix that with some matte black spray paint. Just give the coin a quick coat and then quickly wipe off as much paint as you can before it dries. This leaves paint in the recesses and makes it look dirty, but it still doesn't quite bring the coin to the look we want. That's what we're fixing in the next step, however. Once the paint is entirely dry, we can use a metal polishing compound like this autosol to polish up the high spots of the coin. The reason we burnt it in the beginning is because we want to create a layered patina on the final coin. Some areas will be dark because of the paint, some will be lighter but a bit dull because of the burnt oxidation, and the high spots will be nice and polished. Dirt and grime doesn't happen uniformly in the real world, so try to emulate that for a more realistic result. When you're done, it's possible that the paint looks a bit greyish because of the polishing process. To make it darker, you can treat the coin with a bit of linseed oil. It will absorb into the paint, darkening it and then harden over time. Time to knock this up a level. A custom coin is all well and nice, but if you have access to a CNC mill, making a nice box for it is a fairly trivial matter. I ended up taking a piece of oak, cut it in two and milled out a book matched box with recesses for three coins. While milling out the circumference of the actual box, notches were milled out for hinges and small recesses in the corners to hold magnets to keep the box closed. The coin recesses were also made slightly deeper in the front, allowing the coins to be easily removed by pushing the front of the coin down so the back pops up. If you have a camera in a dusty or grimy environment and you still want to get up close and personal with what you're working on, covering the camera with saran wrap will work great. Just make sure you stretch the plastic across the lens so there are no faults or bumps distorting the footage. Once the box is done and assembled, give it a quick oiling or varnishing and you're done. Look at that fine ass box! As always, thanks for watching this episode from Switch and Lever. Please do follow Switch and Lever on Facebook and Instagram. And while you're waiting for more material, be sure to check out one of the older videos and please do subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time!